All right, everyone, it's uh, Michael Eilbrock with MJE Diagnostics. And uh, today, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm finally going to go into some uh, recordings, some captures that I've done, and actually show uh, these uh, the features in use with the e-scope in real time. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to go over with this is um, it's a it's on a PACR uh, MX-13 uh, engine and what I'm looking at on here is um, I'm looking at cranking cam that's on the yellow and red channel and then I've got um, channel 3 in green which is the fuel uh, the common rail fuel pressure regulator that's on the end of the common rail and then I'm looking at injector current number one and then also I'm looking at um, the common rail pumping valve uh, current for both one and two and uh, what I'm going to show you here is uh, I'm going to show you what this uh, engine is doing on a start uh, so I'll go through how to do the uh, uh, frequency plot and the uh, well not the frequency plot I'm sorry the pulse width modulation plot uh, I'm going to show you how to use that so you can look at the duty cycle of that common rail fuel pressure relief valve uh, while it's starting and then I'll show you um, the uh, how or I'm sorry how long it takes for uh, the RPM to get up from the crank sensor for the uh, the engine uh, to fire and I'll show you the relationship with the common rail pump valves and how that's working and then after that's done uh, then I'm going to go over the um, the timing of the injection pump and how just by looking at this capture I can tell you um, basically how many camshaft lobes are in that injection pump for each pumping unit in the pump. Um, what I've noticed too is about this system, um, it, the uh, it's like a like a hybrid basically from an old Cummins. Uh, so the Cummins IS3 or not the I, the Cummins ISC 8.3 liter engines and the uh, 8.9s when they had the caps fuel systems on them, they had an injection pump uh, with uh, two. Uh, pumping plunger control solenoids on top of an accumulator that builds pressure for the pump. Well, this pump here on this PACR MX-13, it works pretty much the same way, and I'm going to show that to you here. So let's go ahead and zoom in uh, on the capture here. So as you can see here, the green trace, that's the fuel uh, rail pressure relief valve uh, voltage being applied to it. So I'll show you this. So as soon as it starts to turn over and it starts to see uh, some crank and cam signal, the, uh, the computer starts pulsing this valve closed with a positive voltage okay beforehand before it fires so the uh, pump can build up the pressure faster the injection pump okay so that way it can uh, has enough pressure to get to the injector so the injectors will fire and start the engine okay so that's what this here is right here on the green trace all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit pan hand let's just scroll over here a bit And right here is the first uh, current uh, ramp of the uh, common rail pumping valve, and this is going to be for the first one, okay? So let me zoom out a little bit on that so we can see it better, okay? So that's the first one. It fires, and if you notice here, let me uh, turn off the, uh, the green channel. 
this one and this one. There we go. So if you can look right here, all right, if you notice as it's starting to build pressure, the, uh, the time that the valve is on is a lot longer because it needs that time to help build the pressure in the common rail, okay? So now, let me put my cranking cam back on here. So here, finally, here on the white channel, now injector one is starting to fire, okay? All right, so let me just zoom back out the full, and then I'm gonna show you here where it finally starts to fire. Get the zoom out, zoom window. So right here is where the engine starts to fire and it starts to run. So right when that injection event happens is when it starts up and it starts to run, okay? So, <coughs> oh, excuse me. So here's the number one injector event right here, which is the white trace, okay? So if I get my cursors here, And if we measure this, so on just this one channel here for this trace, we're looking at about Four point three one nine volts peak to peak. Okay, so that's how much that it takes for it to have the injector to start fire to fire, and then once it fires, then finally it picks up speed here, as you can see, and it starts to run the engine. Okay, so that's good information to know. Uh, good luck on getting that in a service manual. <laughs> Um, so let me zoom out here again. So now another thing I'm going to go over here is let me turn off the uh, common rail pumping control valve current and then I'm going to turn off the injector and I'm going to put the green trace back on and the green trace here again is the uh, fuel rail pressure relief valve voltage okay and it's a positive pulse width duty cycle okay so now what's cool here is now that we've got this capture now i'm going to show you how to use an advanced feature with e-scope and that's using the pulse width modulation plot all right so i'm going to click on process data all right i only have three selected right now that's what i want and then i'm going to go down the pulse width modulation plot right here and you have an option here where you can invert the pulse width modulation the only time that you want to do this to hit the invert is when you have a duty cycle control co component that uh, is neg negatively pulled down to energize, okay? So for example, so everyone understands, on uh, Cummins Denextronic 2.2 pumps, okay, it sends a voltage out of its speed signal to Cummins. All right, so then Cummins grounds the signal to control the speed of the pump, okay? So if the control grounds it, it's a negative duty cycle, okay? If the control sends out a positive voltage to it, it's a positive duty cycle, okay? So in this circumstance, since this is positively controlled, I do not need to click invert pulse width modulation, all right? So all I have to do now this is simple, you just hit the pulse width modulation plot button, F5, okay? And right here is the actual duty cycle of that common rail fuel pressure relief valve on the common rail, all right? So if we zoom out just a little bit here, I'm gonna get my cursors. So if we measure this on the initial when it's trying to build pressure, okay, all right? it basically is closing that valve to a decent amount. We're at about uh, 34, yeah, 34% duty cycle. 
And then once it starts to uh, f uh, fire the common rail pumping valves, okay, then it starts to level off a little bit. And then, of course, the engine fires and then it levels out, okay? <clears throat> so then finally, at the initial here where it's beginning to start, we got about 25% duty cycle. And then when it starts to run at idle, it's getting down about 21%. Yeah, about 21% duty cycle, okay? So why is this important? Okay, so the reason why this is so important, and I wish manufacturers would give us information like this, is because if you understand the pulse width modulation of different components and how they work to to energize uh, different um, actuators, that can give you a very good telltale of how hard the computer is working. Okay, so. So, so since now that I know this is a known good, okay, I can use this for future reference on starting issues, okay? So say you got a crank no start, okay? Well, you could hook up, look at this signal, and if you notice that the duty cycle is like pegged, like super high, then you know the computer is really, really trying to build fuel pressure, and you've got something going on with the fuel system. You're not getting the pressure that you need, okay? So that's one of the main things that you can use this uh, capture for, for no start issues, okay? So that's pretty neat, all right? So now, now that I've explained that, now what I'm gonna explain to you is uh, injection pump timing on this Packard MX-13, all right? So let's zoom in. turn my injector back on there we go and then I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more all right and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark up 720 degrees of crankshaft rotation and to do that you got to line up your cursors first. So I'm going to go to here. And then I got to get this lined up just right with number one injector. And when you're lining up timing on uh, these systems where you've got diesel injectors, you always want to line it up with the main injection event. And that's this right here, okay? The injection event to the left right here is pilot injection, okay? So if you line it up there, your timing's going to be off. You want to do it on a main injection. Sometimes on a crank, you might see a pilot, a main, and a post. It just depends on uh, temperature of the, en the engine, uh, the, uh, the barrow, uh, there's, and those factors, okay? But what the, the key thing to remember here is you have to line it up with the main injection event. Okay, so now let me, uh, I'm going to zoom back out to full, go back in, and then I'm going to get this one lined up. Get my cursor, line that up with main injection, zoom out. And now we're back where we need to be again, okay? All right, so I've got the cursors lined up. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to mark cylinders. All right, so this is a six cylinder. So all I have to do is I hit mark cylinders. I've already set it to six cylinders there. To change the cylinders, you just have to hit the up and down arrow keys, okay? And so I'm gonna hit mark cylinders. I already have a six cylinder with a firing order of 153624, that's what I want. Um, I'm going to have this on ignition, um, even though I know that's for uh, regular ignition systems, but it means the same thing to 
uh, for diesel engines as well. Okay, so you're gonna now you're gonna hit enter, and now you've got these uh, purple markers that come up that show every other cylinder that's being being fired. And if you notice, uh, pretty much all of these common rail pumping control valves are firing right at uh, injection as well. Now. Um, I'll go into probably another video and show later, but as you as you rev the engine, this blue trace, the common rail pumping valve, is going to shift to the left because it has to advance it to keep up with the pressure, okay, when you advance timing, all right? So you'll see that, and I'll, I'll do another video on that as well when I get some more time, but I thought this would be a good starter to show some more features and uh, get you guys more acquainted uh, with the controls and also um, learn a few things, okay? So so I d I've done this, they're all marked out, so now the cool thing is now I'm going to explain to you how I know how many cam lobes are on this thing for the injection pump, okay? And I think that's pretty cool, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to cursor, all right? And I'm going to line this up on this blue trace here for this common rail pumping valve current. Then I'm going to line it up on this one right here. So as you can see on my degree cursors, I'm a little bit off, but they're 120 degrees apart. Okay. All right. So now, now that I know that each one of these uh, common rail pumping valves fire 120 degrees apart, that also tells me that every other one of these is a different common rail pumping valve, okay? So if I were to leave my first cursor here, right here, okay? And then I take my second cursor here and I go to the other one, this is gonna be common rail pumping valve number one again, okay? And the reason why I know this is because I looked at the wiring schematic and I looked at where injection's happening. And as you see here, for this one here, I've got it lined up with injector one. I know that this is common rail pump valve number one, okay? So then this one would be common rail pump valve number two, then one, then two, one and two, and so on, all right? So now, now that I know this, and the way that they're, they're apart, okay? So if you look at the two uh, measurements that I have now, from here on the first one and here again on the second one, the number one, and it's for both of them, they, f every, they fire at, it's every 240 degrees that they fire, okay? And that goes for the other one as well, okay? So by knowing that, I can uh, tell you that the number of cam lobes that are on this injection pump is it has three. <laughs> it's got three cam lobes, okay? So because the way that they're spaced out, all right, so I've got the, the first one here, you know, uh, at 120, so 120, 240, okay, and then it would be, or actually, no, that would be, it's 120, and then here to here, it's 240, I'm sorry. But anyway, if, if you divide it out, it comes out to that, uh, because if you have um, 360 degrees, and divide that by three, then that's 120, okay? So 120 degrees is when these uh, control valves uh, fire. I hope that makes sense, okay? If you have any questions about that, I'll answer it again, but that's how they work, okay? And that's the reason why I know it's got three cam lobes for each uh, common rail pumping valve, okay? Because if you take 360 degrees, divide it by three, because the cam lobe's got to rotate a full 360 degrees, okay? You take that, divide it by three, well, that comes out to 120 degrees right here, okay? Because these, let me go back, in between these two control valves, pumping control valves, they call it the common rail pump valve. I'm used to calling it uh, pumping control valves because I worked on a lot of CAPS fuel systems in my day. But it's basically the same thing. So now, so if you look at the two cursors, what does it line up to? It says 1 to 15, but it's 120. I'm a little bit off. Well, 
Let me get. There we go. So I'm at 118. If I want to get finicky about it, we can we can do it uh, better. So here, let me. There. Pan hand. Cursor. And then I go to this one right here. So close enough. <laughs> 119.2. So there you go, that proves it. So it's 120 degrees, okay? So now you're probably asking, well, that's all fine and dandy, Mike. That's really cool, but how is that going to help me? Well, here, how is it, how it's going to help you? So if you know this, if you've got something wrong with your pumping, or your common rail pump valves with timing, you're gonna see these current ramps not lining up with these purple hashes here okay so you'll know something's wrong with the timing you know when you're starting it okay and another thing i didn't grab the rail pressure capture i guess i should have but um you can also use the rail pressure sensor signal wire when you're looking at all this and you can look at the pressure drops on your rail pressure sensor signal wire and you can make sure when these common rail pump valves are firing that you've got the equal pressure drops all right i've seen in the past when a type of pump like this goes bad on the Cummins, where the uh, you'll have a cam lobe take a crap on it, okay, and then the ceramic plunger in there will crack and go bad, and it'll chew up the camshaft, okay. So when that happens, you're going to see uh, at different loads, um, mainly at loads is when it flushes out the problem, from my experience. But what you're going to see is in the rail pressure sensor signal wire there's going to be like a uh, like a trough in it okay there's going to be a trough on one spot and then you're going to go to the ne the next firing event and then it's going to be nice and straight and then you'll have your injector fire okay so if you tie that in with the rail pressure sensor signal wire and then use what you've learned today from me about understanding the timing of this injection pump you can id that there's a fault inside the injection pump and you don't have to pull anything apart <laughs> so it's this it's pretty awesome i've been doing this for quite a few years but so this is where i'm getting at everyone okay not the oems i don't know why but they don't give out this this information and this is very valuable stuff here this this can help technicians increase their their efficiency make them faster just by explaining just a few more things in the, in the manuals to help these guys out, you know, I'm sorry, but technicians, we're not dummies, okay? We're very smart individuals. We have to know a lot of different trades in order, you know, to fix things, you know? So um, they just, uh, I don't know, they just, they need to give us a chance. <laughs> so, but uh, but anyway, I'll, uh, I'll get off my soapbox, but, but no, um, you'll be able to use this technique on any type of injection pump, okay? Um, so, and, and here's the other thing too, the other question is, well, Mike, what if I don't have a, a solenoid on top of the, solenoids on top of this pump to show that, that firing? You can still ID it. And the way you ID it is, you look at injector, get an injector one sink, you look at the rail pressure sensor signal wire, and then, crank and cam and what you can do is you can just look at the noise uh, for the injector firings and then you can go off the, the noise off of the injector firings and you'll still be able to ID it with the number one injector because you still have a sink okay so <clears throat> it can be done without the aid of the electronic solenoids okay so just keep that in mind all right so anyway, um, that's pretty much it. Um, if anyone has any questions about anything that I've done here today, uh, you can give me, uh, you can reach out to me uh, through my website, www.mjediagnostics.com. I'm also a trainer uh, for diesel laptops, um, and I do oscilloscope classes for diesel laptops as well. 
Um, so you can also contact me through there uh, on the website. Their website is training.diesellaptops.com. And I'm doing scope classes here every month, okay? Um, and I've got a, a lot of cool information that I'm willing to share. I go from showing you basics, how to operate your scope. Doesn't matter what scope you have, I'll help you with it. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll get you going and, you know, get you, uh, you know, up to a point where you can operate your scope com comfortably. And then later on, as time progresses, then you'll advance and then um, and then later on you can start coming out to more classes. So eventually, you know, there's going to be there's going to be more scope classes, um, advanced level ones, but it just it's it's going to take time. Um, I'm a very busy individual <laughs> right now. So but uh, other than that, I just want to say thank you. I appreciate everyone taking a look at this. Um, I'm uh, I'm doing this to help. I really I care about the diesel industry, technicians in general. I want to help and um, we've got to, in all honesty guys, we got to step up our game, okay? I, I see it all the time, you know. Um, I'm not perfect, but um, I, I try. I want to make myself the best I can be and you should do the same, okay? So, and if you guys and gals, if you don't, if you don't keep up, you're going to be left behind. The, I've seen a lot of crazy stuff <laughs> uh, system wise coming out and it's just going to keep on getting harder and harder and harder if you don't take the time to learn some of the new technologies okay you need to do it if if you don't do it you're you're going to have a lot of trouble you know just being honest with everyone here okay so all right thanks a bunch have a good evening and take care thank you